In the previous lesson, we were introduced to an ellipse, and we said that the equation of an ellipse goes like this, x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1, and we said that sometimes um, the x minus h will be above the b squared, and then the y minus k will have the a squared. And we said that when it's like this, well, first of all, we said that a is always bigger than b. The number a is always bigger than b for an ellipse. So when the a is with the x, then it's a horizontal ellipse. So it looks like that. And when it's when the a, which is the bigger one, is with the y, then it's a vertical ellipse, which looks something like that. Now, another thing we also said, this is just a summary, by the way, before we get into this actual lesson. Um, the summary was that the center is always h and k. This length here is a, because that's along the major axis. This length is b. And then we found something else called a foci, which is the length c. And there's two of them. There's, ov there's obviously also one on the side of here. And for this one, the center is over here. So that's obviously h and k. And then the longer length is a. a is always the longer one then B is then the shorter one over there, and then C would be something like that. Okay, and then we also said to calculate C, we would use this formula over here. So these are the basics that I've spoken about in the previous lesson. If you haven't watched that lesson, then I would highly suggest you go and do that first. But these essentially are the basics that we need to know for ellipses. So let's have a look. So here's our first question. So what I would do is I'll just go draw this all out first, just to give us a bit of a better idea of whether this is horizontal, vertical. So they tell us that the vertex, oh, let's quickly go back. We also learned that these endpoints on the major axis, the major axis is always the longer one. Remember, the longer one, and then there's a shorter one, okay? So those yellow ones are called vertices, or each one is called a vertex. And then we've got these ones, and those we called covertex or covertices if you're talking about more than one. So here they're giving us a vertex at six and zero, so six, zero, and then minus six, zero. So because that's the vertex, then we know that this is going to be horizontal because the vertex is always on the major axis, and the major one is always the longer one. Okay, so we can know that already, that this is going to be on the horizontal. It's going to be a horizontal ellipse, so let's just draw a diagram, something like that. It wasn't so nice. Okay, we also know the foci is 2, 0, and negative 2, 0, okay? So, oh, that's 2, Kevin, not negative 2. Right, now we need the equation. So, we know that this one, because the x is the bigger one, it's on the horizontal axis, we know that the a squared is going to be under there. Right. Now we know that the length from the center to the vertex is what we call a. So a would be 6. So we can say that a is equal to 6. So now what's nice about that is we can go fill in this uh, here as 36, because a uh, 6 to the power of 2 is 36. Oh, we can also fill in h and k. Remember that that is h and k, uh, but that's 0 and 0. So we can put a 0 there and a 0 there. But now, if you say x minus 0, that's just x. And if you say y minus 0, that's just y squared, sorry. Um, now, we know the foci is 2. Now, we know that there's a formula for the foci, which goes like this. So what we can do, the foci is the length from the center to the, to well, that length is C, right? That length is C. So that length is 2. So you could say 2 squared is equal to A squared, which is 36, take away B squared. Now we can go calculate B squared. I'm going to take the B squared to the left, and I'm going to bring the 2 squared to the right. 2 squared is 4. If you had to work out B squared, you're going to get 32, and we can go fill that in. And that is the answer, you see. So it's pretty easy if you've watched the previous lesson of what all the different parts mean. What is A, what is B, what is C, what is H, what is K? Um, then it's pretty easy. So let's do some more examples. Here's our next example. So the first thing I would recommend is just to plot the points so we know whether it's horizontal or vertical. So we've got a negative 2, negative 8, which is over here. 
So that's negative two, negative eight, and then negative two and two, which is over here. Ah, so this is gonna be a vertical ellipse. It's gonna be vertical. Because remember, when they give you the vertex, the vertex is always at the end of the longer, the major axis. So that would, those would be your vertices there and there. Or if your vertices are like that, then it would be a long ellipse. Okay, so the vertices help us to see whether which which axis is the major axis. Okay, so this is going to be the major axis, the longer one, and then that would be the shorter one. So what's important now is that we remember that because they've given us a vertical ellipse, the B will go with X, not the A. That's important. And then this one will have A. Okay, so A is always the bigger one. So A always goes, so if it's a vertical, A goes with Y. If it's a horizontal, B goes, I mean, A goes with X. Okay, so let's just draw the basics of an ellipse. So we know that the center is always H, K. The longer length is A, the shorter length is B, and then to the foci, that's called C. So let's go find the center of this ellipse first. So the center would be the middle of these two points. But now can you agree with me that the x values will not change? See how it's negative two here, negative two here? So it will just stay negative two. So we can say then that h is negative two because that's the x value center. Now to find the y value center, we would have to just plus those two y values together, this one and this one and then divide by 2. Remember, that's how you find the middle of any two numbers. So it'll be 2 plus negative 8 divided by 2, and that's going to give us negative 3. So k is negative 3. Nice. So we have h, we have k. Okay, so let's quickly go fill in this coordinate. Negative 2, negative 3. So we can now find the length of a, which would be from negative 3 up to 2, which is then 5. So a is 5. Now let's go plot the foci. So negative two, negative seven. So negative two, negative seven is over here. And then the other one is at negative two and one. Now remember the foci or the value of C, the value of C is the length from the center to the focus, okay? So if you're going from negative three up to one, then that is a length of four. So C is four. So we can now use this formula which we learnt about in the previous lesson. And we can say that four squared is equal to, now a is five, so that would be 25, take away b squared. So that's gonna be 16 is equal to 25, take away b squared. If you had to get b squared by itself, you should get nine. So we now have pretty much everything we need. So we can go fill in h in the formula. So h we said is negative two, so I've got negative, negative two because the negative's already there, and then h is negative two. So there's two negatives next to each other, which we'll need to change just now or later. I know in America, you don't say just now, but here in South Africa, we say just now a lot, and yeah, it's caused confusion, I know. Sorry, so we'll do it shortly. <laughs> and then b um, is nine, or b squared is nine, and then this would be y take away negative three, a squared is five, so, I mean, a is five, so a squared is 25, and then this is equal to one. So now what we can go do is we can say x plus two squared over nine plus y plus three squared over 25 is equal to one.